Good morning, folks. Awesome eye candy at the galactic level today. One for the imagination and the opposite of yesterday's scolding, two papers that will grip an observer who has done their homework. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the non-Earth directed activity continues. Filaments are snapping. The coronal holes have sent their faster solar wind our way and should arrive within a day or two. Meanwhile, the solar wind is undergoing a minor enhancement this morning. Nothing significant. The start of a switchback or sector boundary crossing we will see throughout the day. We'll also be monitoring the turn of the active regions. The ones facing Earth are small and not flaring, but they are morphing. We've got more coming from just behind the limb. And we'll have eyes on that, but it's time for eye candy here as we have what NASA says is three galaxies merging. Now I see a small one near the 11 o'clock position, but the central mashup appears to have an S shape with a dust ring obscuring the middle. I've seen a thousand galaxy merger images from Hubble. None look like this. It's one of the strangest and yet most beautiful galactic shots we've got from Hubble. Up next is a weird one. They have proven that rocky asteroids and comets did not bring the water to Earth. They are now leaning towards the idea that Earth must have had all its water from the start, even though they know that is lacking almost every realistic piece of evidence they could ask for, but they don't know where else to go with the conclusion. But they do bring up the other possible event, in what's described a bit like the separation of the waters. The option they aren't giving enough credit, but which they mention, is that a pure water source could have impacted the Earth. And then, the mind starts sprinting. But we're back to hard facts here. Another excellent look at AMOC variability in the dansgaard oeschger events. This one helps them understand why it's been so hard to tie everything together before. There are major lags as with everything else involving the ocean. This is sort of like how the two to three year lag in solar forcing of El Nino took half a century to discover because of the two to three year lag causing confusion. DO events are the major millennial cycle changes and some of their effects are lagged, of course. You can learn about that in the Earth Disaster documentary, but that and specifically the NOVA coverage are 100% prerequisite material for today's top story. We are building on the trapping of isotopes on dust in the magnetic pinball remnant of a NOVA. They are finding here that the Iron 60 is more entrained, can't get out as far, and is strongly limited in terms of its ability to traverse interstellar space. Their main conclusion is that yes, it was definitely a nearby Nova, and that can work for the iron isotopes. But what about the aluminum isotopes, the transuranic ones only made in Nova events and which disappear over just a few thousand years? Those are still entrained and wouldn't get here from any nearby star or last long enough in interstellar space for us to encounter it. The magnetic dusty pinball paradigm applied to this new study of iron tells us it is still the sun's long period recurrent micronova that is the source of those other isotopes, as well as the only way to explain all the disaster cycle evidence, the magnetic shifts, ocean dynamics, extinction events, appearance of new species, and the impactor cycle. We greatly appreciate your support. That documentary is listed beneath these morning news videos every day in the description box. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.